Melvin, are you ready to review perimeter and area? Yeah, I sure am, Daisy. Woof, woof. What's Sheila the sheep? She's going to model perimeter for us. Perimeter is the distance around an object. You get the perimeter by simply adding all the sides, and it's a linear measure, such as feet or inches. In contrast, area is the space that an object or a surface covers, and it is measured in square units. Think about the array models that you did in third and fourth grade. All right, let's work a problem. Farmer Fred built a duck pond shaped like a hexagon. The pond and its side lengths are shown. Quack, quack. What is the perimeter of the duck pond in feet? Remember, to get the perimeter, you simply add up all the sides. When some of the side lengths are the same, you can take some shortcuts. For example, I have two sides that are 14 and a half feet, so I'm going to multiply 14 and a half times two. We have one digit to the right of our decimal, so we start at the right and go backwards one. I have four side lengths that are 10 and a half feet long, so I'm simply going to do 10 and a half times four. Again, one digit to the right of the decimal, so I start at the right and go backwards one. The last step is to add these measurements. Since the decimal part was zero, I can leave it off. So the perimeter of the duck pond is 71 feet. Yeah, I'll do the next one, Maisie. Yeah, okay. Well, this is Farmer Fred's corral. It's shaped like a rectangle. It's 9.7 meters long and 8.62 meters wide. We need to find the perimeter and the area. I'll start with the perimeter. To get the perimeter, you add up all the sides. Make sure with decimals when you're adding that you line up your decimal points. It's also good to fill in zeros to help keep things lined up. Yeah, that's good, Melvin. Here it goes. When you add or subtract decimals, you bring your decimal point straight down. So my perimeter is 36 and 64 hundredths meters. Yeah, I'll do the area. Remember to think about array models when you're doing area and think of, your, of the situation as having so many rows with so many squares in each row. And even though these aren't whole numbers, that will help you remember to multiply. When you multiply with decimals, write the numbers without the decimal at first and line up the digits and then put your decimal point in. All right, let's multiply. Remember to put a zero placeholder when you move to the nine. Now let's count all of our digits to the right of the decimal point. One, two, three. So I start at the right and go backwards three places. So my area is 83 and 614 thousandths square meters. Yeah, here's another one. Farmer Fred's wife teaches fifth grade. She ordered a set of Education Galaxy Alien Card posters. So cool for her classroom. The box that the posters were shipped in was a rectangular prism. The length of the base of the box was 18 inches and the width was 12 inches. The height of the box was 6 inches. We need to find the perimeter and area of the base of the box. Whew! I need some workspace and I need to visualize this problem. Here we go. That's better. Since we just want the perimeter and area of the base, which is the bottom, I don't even care about the height. Let's just focus on the base. The length is 18 inches and the width is 12 inches. To get the perimeter, we add everything up. I am going to take a shortcut this time because I know that 18 plus 12 is 30. So the other 18 and 12 would make another 30, and when I add this, I get 60. So the perimeter is 60 inches. Yeah. Okay, Melvin, I'll calculate the area. I do this by multiplying length times width. The area is 216 square inches. Yeah. Yeah. Woof. Now it's your turn, kids.